In part two of the series on the cell, we learn that cells are performing complex chemical reactions called metabolism, and one set of those reactions involves food molecules, and the point of those reactions is to extract energy from food molecules. And we wanted to understand food molecules as storing potential energy in their chemical bonds, and when these chemical bonds are broken by teams of proteins, energy is released. In this lesson, we'll look at the role of mitochondria in the final processing of food molecules. Now, mitochondria uh, cannot be seen in the pictures of our cheek cells here, so I've put these little icons in. They are membrane-bound structures where the final stages of glucose metabolism occur. And we're going to compare mitochondria to metabolic engines of the cell. There are many mitochondria in each cell, so they produce a lot of energy for the cell. In a simplified fashion, we'll say that mitochondria complete the breakdown of food molecules to extract usable quantities of chemical energy. So the food molecules enter the mitochondria, complex chemistry goes on here, waste is eliminated, and the result of this chemistry is usable quantities of chemical energy. Now the chemistry that goes on in mitochondria requires oxygen. And so here we see oxygen moving right through the cell membrane. Remember oxygen is a small molecule so it can go right through the lipid uh, membrane and into the uh, mitochondria. So actually oxygen has to pass through two sets of membranes, the outer cell membrane and then the membranes of the uh, mitochondria. Uh, and this is why uh, animals must breathe. Animals are composed of animal cells. Animal cells have mitochondria and the chemistry that goes on in mitochondria it requires oxygen. A waste product of that chemistry is carbon dioxide and that's what we are exhaling every time we exhale. Now what do cells do with the chemical energy? So here we see the food molecules have been operated on by some proteins and then the, the, the resulting food molecules go in here and then chemical energy is produced. What are cells going to be doing with that chemical energy? Very important things. They're going to use that chemical energy to build important molecules. So here we see we're going to have two more proteins, this, or actually one protein, but later in time it's going to uh, bind these two chemicals, so these two uh, molecules, going to make a chemical bond between them. So these, this protein is building uh, something in the cell. And what is it used to build with? Well, that's another aspect of food. Food not only is a source of energy, but also building materials. And so here we see some different kinds of molecules. They might be amino acids or fats or, or the molecules that make up DNA, etc. So cells are going to be using the basic nutrients in our food as building materials, and proteins are going to use the chemical energy produced by mitochondria to do construction processes. Let's take a closer look at, at what's going on there. Here's our protein. And notice we have a red molecule triangle and a green square molecule. And this protein is specialized to bind the two so they will stick to these two spots on the protein. And then what the protein will do is make a chemical bond between them. So this is how proteins can build the cell's molecular parts. Remember, cells are composed of molecules. And so there are teams of proteins whose job it is is to perform chemistry on basic nutrients so as to build useful molecules for the cell. Now the, the cell must have reserves of chemical energy to power this chemistry. In other words, it takes energy to make chemical bonds between molecules. And so when we look at this picture here, uh, there's going to have to be some external source of energy. So we have the plus chemical energy. And that's why then uh, we, we said it was important that the mitochondria was supplying this chemical energy because many of the chemical reactions occurring in the cell require a little bit of external energy to get the reaction going. So now we'll get a little more complicated here, what's going on in the mitochondria. Mitochondria break down glucose and store its energy in molecules called ATP. Now, remember we said technically uh, some of this uh, processing of glucose happens in the cytoplasm first. So uh, whereas we said food molecules uh, uh, previously, uh, the glucose will be broken down a little bit in the cytoplasm and then those molecules will enter the uh, mitochondria. So we're simplifying a bit. Uh, the chemistry here requires oxygen, so here we have oxygen going into the mitochondria. Here are the, specifically the waste molecules, water and carbon dioxide are the waste mo molecules from this chemistry. But now we have the introduction of this important type of molecule, they're called ATP molecules. 
So what's going on in the mitochondria, the energy of glucose is being stored in a new set of molecules called ATP molecules. Now why not use the energy in glucose to power cell chemistry directly? Well, if we use a monetary example, we can think of glucose as storing $20 worth of energy. But many of the proteins need only $1 worth of energy to perform the chemical reaction. So in a sense, ATP molecules have more usable quantities of energy than the glucose molecule. And so another way to look at this is to use our concepts of potential energy. We might say that, uh, that what the mitochondria is doing is taking food molecules with high potential energy, because they have more chemical bonds, and converting that energy into a set of lower potential energy ATP molecules. So it just turns out that the way the cell chemistry works, uh, the cell chemistry needs smaller quantities of energy to, to make and break the chemical bonds associated with metabolism. And the high energy food molecules just have kind of too much of that energy. So it's not a usable form of energy. So the mitochondria is converting high potential energy food molecules into a set of lower potential energy ATP molecules. And I just wanted to take a moment to compare what's going on in the mitochondria to the engine again. Remember, the car engine is taking potential energy in the form of a chemical called gasoline, right? These are, these are the energy of chemical bonds of the gasoline molecules and converting that energy into the uh, energy of motion, kinetic energy. So the, inside the uh, cylinders, you know, there will be explosions and pistons will move and the drive shaft will move and the wheels will move and the car goes. So we have the conversion of potential energy into kinetic energy. When the mitochondria it's not that, that we're getting a kinetic energy out. We're not getting necessarily the energy of motion here. We're getting potential energy turned into more usable forms of potential energy. These molecules called ATP. Now, what kinds of molecules are constructed in this way by this team of proteins? Well, very important molecules like proteins themselves and DNA are chain molecules built from a finite set of different molecules linked together into a chain. Proteins are composed of a chain of molecules called amino acids. And these are some of the basic nutrients that we're getting in our food when we eat protein. There are 20 different kinds of amino acids and kind of shown here by different colors and shapes. So a protein is really just a chain molecule composed of these units called amino acids. And then this long chain will fold up into a shape and then that shape determines the, the function of the protein. So different proteins have different uh, sequences of these amino acids. They fold up differently and therefore have different functions. They do different jobs. DNA is also a chain molecule. It's this double helix, a complicated molecule, but it's really made up of these four different subunits that make up the rungs of the ladder. Uh, so out of these four different types of molecules, we, we can uh, uh, stitch them together into these rungs into a long chain that is the DNA molecule. So when we think about proteins linking together two molecules, well, that has to happen when proteins get made or when DNA gets made. So it's proteins that will be assembling other proteins, and proteins will be assembling DNA as well. In this uh, diagram, we're just sort of reminding ourselves that we get building materials in our food. These would be nutrients like amino acids or the building blocks of DNA or the building blocks of fats. And we have teams of proteins plus the chemical energy in ATP molecules produced by mitochondria to build large, important molecules that make up the cell, whether it's DNA or protein or the lipids that make up the membrane. So the nutrients in food are the very building materials for making proteins, DNA, and lipids. So here we have those nutrients entering the cell. We have teams of proteins that will be operating on those nutrients, building important cell molecules like proteins or lipids or DNA. And the energy to do that comes from mitochondria. And the energy from mitochondria ultimately comes from the food that was imported to the cell. So proteins are, are star players in, in, the, in the life of the cell. It is uh, the proteins themselves uh, can be built by a set of specialized proteins that do the chemistry needed to make chain molecules. So we're, we want to think of proteins can be assisting in the construction of other proteins, including proteins like themselves. 
Now that sounds strange, but consider a factory, an auto factory. So proteins building other proteins, well, that's just like machines being used to build other machines. So here we have a car and we have got these robots over here and these robots are designed to do some operation on the car. So we've got a machine building a machine. Now just imagine if the robots were not building cars, what if the robots were building robots like themselves? Robots building robots. That's the idea. We want to think about within the cell, we've got these teams of proteins that are molecular machines. They build all of the important molecules in the cell, including themselves. In the final part of the cell series, we'll take a look at the role of the nucleus and the contents of the nucleus, and then summarize our understanding of cells.